What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that allows you to quickly and easily set up your EV rendering settings so that your renders look more realistic. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the add-on we're talking about in this video is the EV Production Suite. And so basically what this add-on does is it really has two parts. It has a part that has the EV Express piece in it. So that's going to be the EV setup functions. And then there's also a material nodes function, which we'll talk about that allows you to set up different materials and other things like that. But I'm really excited about specifically the EV setup stuff. And if you're watching this today through, I think Monday at the end of the day, this is also on sale. So um, make sure you check that out. I will link to that in the notes down below. But basically what this does is this allows you to quickly add lighting studios and setups to EV. So that's going to be the first piece. So let's jump over into Blender and we'll take a look at how it works. So right now, and this is a model that I've downloaded from Sketchfab, so you can download it and follow along. It's the uh, bust of Napoleon Bonaparte from Malopska's Virtual Museums, which is a super cool collection, by the way. But um, we're gonna download this, and what we wanna do is we wanna light this. All right, so um, when, when, you set up a, when you set up an image for rendering, especially an EV, there's a lot of different things you have to do to make it look good, right? So what we could do is we could jump over into EV and then start adding things like area lights and other things like that to kind of set up the way the lighting is going to look inside of our render. But it's going to be a lot of setup and a lot of other things and a lot of settings you have to kind of mess around with in order to get things to look good, right? So we're going to be adding like planes so that you have shadows. And then you have to go over and you start start having to mess around a screen space select. Yeah. Then you have to mess around a screen space selection or reflections, all of that different stuff, right? And it's just kind of painful to do. Like you can do it, but it's gonna be a lot of extra work to get a realistic render in Eevee. Well, what we can do instead is we can use this add-on really quickly. So um, what we wanna do is we just wanna jump over here and we wanna find the NMS toolbar that you can find right here. Well, at the top of the page, what it's got is it's got a number of different presets that you can use for different kinds of rendering. So for example, let's say that we wanted to render this just with uh, kind of some light with a little bit of defined shadows in here. Well, we could just click on this and what this is gonna do is this is gonna bring in a backdrop this is going to bring in lighting, so very complex lighting setups. It's going to bring in all of that different stuff for us. And so instead of us having to go figure that out ourselves, what we can do is we can use this add-on in order to quickly set this up. And one of the cool things about this is you can toggle between the different options. So for example, say that we don't like this, say that we wanted to go with maybe one of these, let's go with the candlelight function. So you can light this as if it was lit by candlelight and notice how it just swaps all of these out. So you don't have a bunch of settings sitting on top of each other. Instead, you can just try different things just by clicking on these just like this. And so the cool thing about this is there's all these different options in here, right? So for example, you could pick maybe the fog function, like one of these fog functions, that's actually gonna add fog into your rendering. And there's drop downs in here where you can control the different looks and the different things that are being done by things like your fog. You can get in here and you can adjust your three point lights. So you can adjust like the strength of your key lights or your backlights or your fill lights. Um, so you can adjust those really quickly inside of your rendering. So I can just come in here and type a value of like a thousand in order to bring that fill light down and notice how that gets dimmer over here. So all of this is really adjustable and also really easy to get to right here. And so there's other things in here as well, like things like uh, your color management, for example. If you remember inside of Blender, usually if you switch things to high contrast, they're gonna look better than if you leave them on none because they're gonna look kind of washed out on none. So you can access all of those settings over here. I know some of those you can find inside of your EV settings on the right hand side of the page, but you can adjust them here as well. So let's go ahead and let's switch this to, let's go back to our stripe frontal setup right here. And let's kind of set this up the rest of the way. So you can come in here and you can adjust your camera settings as well. So, and these are functions that you can find elsewhere, but this kind of puts them in one easy to access place. So what you can do is you can um, set your camera, you can lock it to your view, 
right here, which is what we would do in our view settings. But then if you wanted to add some other things in here, like for example, and my Bonnie model is just kind of sitting halfway through the wall in the background, but um, you could add things like depth of field. So you can set depth of field based on the location of your 3D cursor. So if I was to put my 3D cursor right here and click on add depth of field, what that's gonna do is that's gonna focus your camera on the 3D cursor location. So you can also adjust the focal length of your camera right here and your f-stop which is going to adjust how much contrast there is between your focus area and your non-focus area. So you can see how you can use this in order to set this up really um, really easily. And then one of the cool things about this, and we'll leave our camera sitting here right now, so this brings in your light probes right here that you need in order to make this more realistic and easy. And so once you have these in here, what you can do is you can jump over into your render settings and you can click on the button for bake indirect in order to bake that indirect lighting. So you can do that all within this add-on right here. And the cool thing about this is once you're all done, you can just take this and you can just render your image and it's going to render out really nice inside of Eevee. So it really sets all of this stuff up for you instead of you having to go through and figure it out yourself. It allows you to get a lot better results rendering in Eevee. And so in addition, if you get the full version of this add-on, it's also going to come with a material setup. And so the material setup is going to give you really kind of two options. Right, so the first is going to be the material nodes. So the material nodes is going to be an add-on that you're gonna add that allows you to create your own materials. And they're basically building blocks that you can use to create your own materials. So you can combine them together. Um, they even have um, a mix compatibility with Fluent Materializer, which I may mess around with in the future. Um, I'm not gonna do too much about it in this video, but there's also a library of materials. So how can you access those? So the first thing is you need to make sure that you install them. So um, they get brought in here as, so they get brought in here as material nodes and procedural material assets. And so you need to take both of those, you need to make sure those are installed um, along with um, when, when you first install the add-on. But what that's gonna do is for the materials, if we jump over into shader, so the materials, if we jump over into the shader tab, and let's go ahead and let's just jump into material preview mode real quick. So what that's going to do when you have that enabled is there's going to be a menu if you tap the N key for material nodes. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to add different shader options over here. And notice how these can kind of be stacked together. So there's things like uh, there's things like fabric, but there's also things like noise masks and other things like that. We're not going to get too far down that road for right now, but let's say that you wanted to add the skin shader to this object just for a second. So we're going to click on add shader. Then all you would do is you would just plug the output of the node into your material output. Right, and so what that's gonna do is that's gonna add this skin material to your object. And so you can adjust things like the skin color as well as things like the pores, like the size of the pores and also um, adding some darkness to the pores, other things like that. So you can really kind of customize this using the sliders over here. So you can adjust the bump of the pores and all of that is going into your material output. So you get access to all of these different material nodes that you can kind of combine, combine together, but you also get access um, down at the bottom of the page to a bunch of procedural shaders that they've created with this add-on. So for example, there are shaders for things like metals. So if we wanted to make this metal, we could just select our object, click in here and select, let's go with the iron function. That's gonna apply this material over here in your screen. Notice how it takes a second to apply that because it has to compile the shader, but you can use that to quickly add things like the metal, or in this case, probably a marble material would make more sense. So maybe we could add something like this marble 01, or maybe the marble 03 because it has less like veins in it. But you can use these procedural shaders that have already been created to add different materials in here as well. So the car paint is really interesting. So and this is all set up to work really well with Eevee. 
So then if you go through, you render your image, you just get a really great result without having to go through and manually fix all this different stuff. Um, right, you just kind of get the result that you're looking for and it makes Eevee do what you want it to do. So remember this add-on is on sale through uh, Monday night. So if you do want to check it out, this is a great time to do that. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this add-on. If you'd like to see more from it, just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.